Um, let's get into recaps because we got a, the final week of Summer of Steven. Good news, though, is that starting next week, we're just going to get regular episodes. I think next week we have two, and then it's just going to be one, and then every every Thursday. Um, cool. A normal schedule. Yeah. A novel concept. Here's the thing. Super Watermelon Island to Bubbled was one season. We just did a season in less than a month. That's... Yo, man, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. We it started with uh we had a three parter. Uh, it was like a four parter. Yeah, like originally the the like l- the names they, they weren't leaked. They were released as like Beta Part One, Earthlings Part Two, Back to the Moon Part Three. But like Bubbled picks up right after Back to the Moon, so it's a four part finale. Uh okay. Beta. And they aired Beta and Earthlings the same day, so we got the four-part finale and then the first two episodes of season four this week. All right, so Beta. They, uh, Stephen, Amethyst, and Peridot go to the Beta Kindergarten, where Jasper was grown. Whoa, 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 whoa. We gotta, s- you just skipped right to the thing. What about all those hilarious goofs? All the, all the, uh, all. So many great goofs. What the- about the meat morphs? The alt, alt, the, the alt art. Yeah, they're cool art. This reminds me of how I feel trapped. It serves no purpose whatsoever. It just makes me feel bad. <laughs> it reminds her about our relation, the fragility of of of, inter, of interpersonal relationships. Interpersonal relationships, yeah. And then the Canadian guy's like, I, I just feel... I just feel trapped. I just feel trapped. Is that about when you were tripped under the ocean? Nah, I just like the show. <laughs> I just really like that show. Amethyst doesn't give a sh- uh, Lapis doesn't give a shit about nothing no more. Yeah, Lapis likes that show, and she and she humored Peridot. Like, they were getting along. It, along. Yeah. it was super cute. Yeah. I love... The, this is my favorite thing that, like, canon shows need to do more, because you can only get it from fandom shit, usually, is, d- like, domestic shit. Like, hey, what are these characters doing when they're just, like, fucking chilling? Yeah, it's can like... You the, get, like, more than two seconds of fucking chilling? It's like, a, it's like you know, the element of the copy sh- coffee shop AU, but without no stakes whatsoever. Yeah, man, like, like, because at, at first, like, the, the logic behind never showing that shit is because it's like, oh, well, it's not interesting, but it's like, I don't know, I feel like in this era of entertainment where characterization is getting so good and they, and we're getting better at writing, like, really real people, like, at first you would think, like, no one's gonna want to watch, like, I don't know, like, Pearl try to cook breakfast for Steven, like, no, that sounds great. Yeah, and, like, I don't know, and, and like, Paradox is trying to impress Amethyst, and, like, Lapis is... Like, Lap- you think Lapis would just be done with everybody's nonsense, like, and even Peridot, but she's just like, nah. She can, like, turn it on and off, you know? Like, the scene where they were dancing was so cute. Like, yeah, no, it's great. I- she's she's a really real character because it's like she's not 100% all about, like, oh, her trauma or her baggage. Like, she can still I- exist outside of that, like, a real person who goes through those things. Yeah. yeah. Um... um- yeah, that's something that Lauren Zook said, is that she wanted to, you know, r- write a, a character with PTSD very well-rounded. The, the PTSD is not the sum of her character, because it usually is not for people, unless it's, like, wicked bad. No, like, sometimes she watches Camp Pining Hearts, and sometimes she makes meat morphs, and sometimes she dances and plays tambourine. Tooch, did you catch where uh, uh, Peridot got the bow tie from? Uh, she, didn't she, like, tear it off of the alien or whatever? No, she tore it off of something. She tore it off the alien, because when you see the alien floating in the, in the tank, it, it has the neck ripped out. Yeah. And I love that incredibly domestic exchange when Paradox leaving, and she's like, okay, I'm leaving! Okay, you need anything? No. What season is that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know what to do with this, and she just throws the book. Okay, bye! (laughs) <laughs> uh, so then they oh, ha- I need I need a full eleven minutes of that. Yeah. No other characters. I need an eleven minute barn episode. Yeah. So the, the but the plot part is that Amethyst is still kind of messed up from her fight with Jasper. She feels worthless. She wants another one on one. She wants validation that she could be just as good as somebody like Jasper. And then Paradox like, oh what? Her kindergarten was a fucking piece of crap. I'll show you. Here's a clown college. So they go, and we get to see it. It's kind of neat. Uh, yeah, it's like all red sa- sandstone. It looks like a rat shit Amigara fault, as opposed to uh, Kindergarten Prime, which looked like a regular Amigara fault. Yeah. And, yeah, 
uh, Peridot is because I guess she's a specialist in like supervising this stuff. It's like yeah, she's a licensed kindergartner. And she's doing basically ballistics analysis on all the exit holes. Yeah. It's like everyone here looks like a shithead. What about that one? And it's like an enormous perfect one. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that was Jasper. <laughs> and then she came she came out flexing. Yeah. yeah. And then she, like, examines it and is like, oh, man, it's glass all the way back. And She's like, I've never seen one this perfect before in my life. Um, and that's my, fav- that's my favorite kind of, like, I guess it's, like, techno babble because she just kept, like, making up shit. And, like, it was, like, she doesn't explain what any of the qualifications that she says means, but she, like, you believe it. Like, okay, clearly, yeah, these these sound like elements that somebody who knows about this stuff would, like, check to see the quality of a gem. Yeah, it sounds like the, the, the jargon of it. Um, now, now th- that scene reminded Nina of something, and, and the two of us had to unpack it completely. Because it reminded her of a scene from uh, Pooh's Grand Adventure, The Search for Christopher Robin. Uh, uh. Ch- I imagine you've seen that movie only the one time. Yeah. Yep. It reminded the, the the delivery of Peridot being like, oh well, if you, you go to this part, uh, no, no, uh, no, no, that's perfect. Yeah. That, that's, well, if you go over here, no. Oh, but if I if I do this thing where I go back, it reminded me of the part in the Winnie the Pooh movie where Rabbit is like with the map, and she's like, well, if we just go, if he he's like, well, if we just go over here, or we could go over here. This way is good too. And the other ones are just staring at him completely blank. Hoping that something is gonna happen. Like it's like the joke is kind of like it's drawn out a little bit. I don't know. I liked it a lot. But yeah, yeah, no, totally. And they find out that some of the holes have been kind of gouged out to make makeshift cages for corrupted gems. And even Paradox, like, what the what what? And Jasper is in the kindergarten, screaming at gems. <laughs> yeah, just screaming. Just belittling them. And then we get to Earthlings. Amethyst is like, okay, here's my chance. I'm going to take her down. And Steve and Peridot like, that's not a good idea. We should, we should call for backup. And then, but Amethyst just goes ahead. Jasper is just yelling at this this poor creature, saying terrible things to it. Um, but also, you know, telling us a little bit more about herself and how she views the world. She explains to us that on Homeworld gems that are that, that come out imperfect or later corrupt their form or whatever are basically purged from the gem bloodline, even though I mean, that's not really a thing they have to worry about. They're, they're, they're purged from the institution because they're dead weight. Every gem is created with a specific purpose, and if they can't meet it, then there's no use keeping them around. There's nothing for them to do in, in, a, in a society where your job is dictated by your birth. Then if you can't do that one thing, you can't do anything, so bye. Yeah. And Jasper, it's very clear that she was the most perfect thing that came out of Earth, as far as Gem Homeworld standards are concerned. Like, everything about her origins suggests that she shouldn't have been the way that she is, and yet she is. And she seems to be battling with this, like, entitlement of what she's owed to be, what her destiny is, of, like, her birthright or whatever. I, I mean, but all we, this we shit learn, going wrong for we her. We learn later that she was a war hero. She was hailed as, a, as such. Uh, but then this one mission broke so bad. Yeah, like, it, it, it completely just fucked up her shit. It's, it's some really amazing, like, briefly spoken but a lot of heavy implications on jasper's character what she's about what she's going through and like explaining her actions without like uh, trying to justify them yeah Yeah. i i I think it's reductive to call jasper evil um i mean she's 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 very much a perfect creation of the system that bore her yeah she certainly fulfills a villainous role but she's not diabolical yeah, no, she like she she like she has she has ideologies that make sense to her and the world she comes from. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh Amethyst is no match for her. She can't do it. She feels like complete utter garbage. And then Steven's like, Amethyst, it's fine. Who cares? I'm garbage too. Let's be garbage together. We're garbage friends. We we really are the worst, and that's what makes us the best. Hug, mushroom cloud, Smoky Quartz. Yeah. The mushroom cloud that forms when they fuse is because Smoky Quartz is radioactive. The actual gem. Oh. Yeah. Because it was a really weird fusion. This is yeah. kaboom! But yeah. 
We get Smoky Quartz. I play by Natasha Leon. Uh, and, sh- and they are so fun. <laughs> I, yeah, I love Smoky Quartz to death. Because Smoky Torps, like, they kind of look like a top because they do this spinning thing. But then they have the yo-yo. And the yo-yo is rad. And, like, they're also a comedian with so many puns. So Smoky Quart- Quartz is, like, you know, kind of whooping Jasper. Jasper's, like, at her wit's end because she's like, why is fusion always the thing with you people? So she's like, okay, fine. I'll fuse too. So she goes up to one of the, the gems. It's like, let's fuse. Let's win. Well, one of the Corrupto gems, which yeah. is what I thought she was going to do when she was capturing the gems. I thought she was like so bent out of shape about fusion that she was uh, going to fuse with them. Just... And it partly is. This idea, this again, because she's supposed to be the perfect gem, the idea that she's not enough on her own. And that she's experienced that firsthand, being with Malachite, that, like, how much more she could be with someone else is, like, both, like, kind of scary and completely rocks her whole world. So she fuses with this monster, and they fight, but Smoky Quartz wins anyway. And when and the fusion breaks, the, the corruption runs away, and the line is like, why does no one who fuses with me want to stay? Yeah, because she's never cared about I mean, but the two times she, the two times she's fused, it's been it is br- it was bad. bad, but it's time. but no matter what happens, it's still a profound thing, even if it's like a profoundly bad thing. Yeah, so I can I can see her developing a complex from that. Well, she doesn't understand that a fusion is a relationship. She sees it as a power up that she apparently needs because she's not enough on her own. She doesn't see it as like this is how I am with another human being, or not human being, but y- you know what I mean. Gem. So she comes out, she's like fucking you know, kind of reached her 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 breaking point in a way, just kind of like when it comes to her frustration. And we see that the corruption is spreading to her, uh, slowly. Steven wants to save her, she doesn't want his help because she still thinks he's um Rose. And she explains to us that ever since she was born she says, from the moment I, you know, escaped from this planet, like from, from the dirt of this planet, I've been fighting because of what you did to what was supposed to be mine. Again, because she's this amazing gem. She would have been a gem noble, probably, because she's just perfect. Like a, or like a general. A general. And it had, and from the moment she was... She, she just, wouldn't have liked noble life. She would have liked yeah. to be a general. Despite being perfect, despite she, the fact that she should have had everything... It was all taken away before she could even have the chance to be alive by somebody else. Um, Everything that she was promised was taken away. The colony, her her life, uh, and the diamond, we learn, of course. The exchange is like, my diamond, yellow diamond? No, my diamond, your diamond, pink diamond! And then then full uh, corruption... Amethyst, who spent the whole episode trying to move one piece no, of Paradox. Paradox, who spent the whole episode trying to move one piece of metal, runs her through it, then it's like, you're welcome! Oh, Paradox does have a good... Sp- <laughs> Paradox has had a great speech to Jasper, too, where she was like, Earth sets you free! And it was, it's just, it's kind of cute to see, like, how much she's grown, um, and, like, an outsider's perspective, kind of, of the whole thing. But then, like, Jasper really comes up with her own interpretation of that whole situation. She's like, oh, like, I get it now. Rose Quartz finds gems, like, at their lowest point in their life. Like, she makes them hit rock bottom, so then they'll they'll listen to whatever has to say, and and they'll join her just so they can feel like they have some place again. Yeah, and And I don't think she's... That was chilling. I don't think she's 100% off base. I mean, it's a cynical way to view it, but it's partly... Well, the Crystal Gems are a band of misfits. They are. They're all... They're a a band of lovable dunderheads. They're all... The, the, The difference in perspective is Rose Quartz is telling these gems, let me help you, but Jasper is seeing it as, hey, you help me. Yeah. Because you've got no one else. Exactly. She gets poofed. She's bubbled. It's, it's emotionally cathartic, but also not all the way. Amethyst refers to her as a sister, which fucked me up. Yeah. Yeah. She calls her sis, because they're both, like, that's been the whole thing, is they're both supposed to be cut from the same cloth, but, like, 
shit happened and they're not, but she she still regards her with some matter of like familial shit. Yeah, which because is amazing. She she can relate to her almost more than say like Garnet or Pearl who came from Homeworld and had this whole other thing. Like she's like, I've only ever known this Earth and. I know what I was supposed to do, and I know how it didn't pan out. Yeah, so all that happens. They come back to the barn to drop off Peridot, and then, uh oh, shenanigans afoot, which leads directly into Back to the Moon. And that is that. Because the rubies are back! <laughs> Yay! So, yeah, the rubies came back because they went to Neptune, she wasn't there, they came back, and were initially, immediately like. You off- told us she was on Neptune, so we went! To Neptune, and she wasn't there! (laughs) Her performance of these rubies is so, like, specifically awkward in an intentional way that I love. I, these rubies are literally like, they're like grown children. Yeah. I love them. I love them so much. They're all, they're all my daughters. It's just a lot of characters to play, too. Yeah, they're all distinct. Yeah. I mean, some of them are similar, like Navy and Leggy and... Eyeball um, and army are more aggro. Point is, they're like, where? So where's Jasper? And Amethyst shapeshifts to Jasper's like, oh, I'm right here. Let's, y- you guys can leave. Now we got to file a report. I uh, on the moon. Okay. <laughs> to we the gotta moon. take these cap cap captives. I gotta stay. <laughs> blah, blah. Mm. The, the genuineness in which they fell for her ruse was so adorable. When they're just, like, doing the silent clap and, like, the crying and, like, why is that, Jasper? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, uh, one of the gem, one of the rubies, Eyeball, she is a veteran from the war. She knew of Jasper, heard the, the legends about her, has a lot of respect and for her. And actually served in the, in the, in the Civil War. Yeah. And, That's which is apparent. She was a veteran. Yeah. Which is indicated by the fact that her skin tone is lighter than the others, because that's the thing that happens to gems with age. Right. Is that, is that the, the, the color becomes less rich. So, um... But from, you know, light, light exposure. Like a, a gem in the ground, like nothing, but... Right. And she has this cute kind of, like, senpai thing with Jasper, <laughs> where she, like, wants to be noticed, and, like, when, she, when Amethyst Jasper puts uh, Doc on her lap... Eyeballs you like just see. crying. She's like, no. Oh, it's so adorable. A uh, pearl is putting on. <laughs> ter- she's a terrible actress. Yeah, if you you give pearl the opportunity to act, she will uh, ruin Ham it. Ham it up. <laughs> She'll have too much fun and forget that there's like stakes involved. <laughs> uh, so they fly to the moon, and then at the moon is where sort of like the heart happens both like the emotional impact and then like a big drop like story bomb happens where eyeball comes in and sort of gives us a lot of background of how things ended up the way that they did she says that the colony belonged to pink diamond which if you look at the mural it was pink diamond's only colony um yeah we've now finally seen all the murals and they've all got planets and moons surrounding them pink diamond only has one planet and one moon yeah, so what that means about Pink Diamond, we're not 100% sure whether it means she's younger or what. But the Earth belonged to Pink Diamond. Uh, uh, Rose Quartz was a quartz soldier born of on Earth, which we kind of pieced together from Eyeball and Jasper and Bismuth, what they've all said about Rose in this past couple episodes. Uh, and Rose ended up shattering Pink Diamond in order to win the war. Which is, the reaction is pretty intense. You know, Pearl is, like, shaking. Garnet is, like, trying not to say anything. Amethyst doesn't know what to do because she's trying to stay in character. And then Steven is just distraught. distraught Because in this season in particular, his whole relation, what that, what his actual relationship to his mother is has kind of been coming to a head more and more. Like, it's, we're really pushing on that pressure zone of just, like, how is this kid going to make sense of his own identity in relation to this other person that he is but is not? And Pete, like, like gems keep confusing him for his mother. Yeah, he has to constantly deal with that. And so when he hurt, when he hears that, you know, his mom or him or whoever shattered a diamond, he's like, "What?" Like he doesn't know how to process that information. 
you know, they finish pleasing the rubies, they leave, they congratulate Amethyst for a job well done, but then they come back and- The rubies like, you guys need a ride! <laughs> what the- What did I try to get? <laughs> so, um, Steven does the whole airlock trick with them, because cause they fuse into the big ruby, which is the funniest voice. Yes, yeah, Charlene Yee basically just going, I know I'm gonna get you! <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Uh, uh, Sardonyx appears for a little bit. It's a knock him out of the airlock. But and then Steven just pops out right there and the episode ends. And Jojo. Yeah. Jojo joke. Jojo. Jojo joke. The Jo joke. Jojo. And then the next episode is Bubbled. It's the scariest goddamn episode where uh, Steven is just spends a whole episode major tommed. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like, there are just shots of him floating, and then the endless expanse of space, and I wanted to barf. <laughs> uh, he hangs out with Eyeball a little bit. He tries to rescue her. At one point, he heals her, because her gem cracks, convincing her that he is Rose Quartz, essentially. Again, because he's, he's confused. The uh, Eyeball tries to kill him, you know, and, and, you know, in his Steven way, he's trying to reach an understanding. He's trying to see if there's a way we can solve this problem without hurting each other, but there just kind of isn't, and he just has to throw her out of the bubble into the expanse of space. I'm really worried about the rubies. Oh, they're fine. I mean, they're not gonna die, but, like... They're gonna get They're gonna get the space madness! Yeah, like... like I'm not gonna talk about Metal Gear Solid 3 again, but that's gonna happen to them. <laughs> um, um. And then, you know, the gems end up finding him in the ruby ship. The, the song plays Love Like You crying and whatever from from everybody including me yeah, yeah. And it's like hey, this is so happy uh, and then they and then they, and then they have a fucking real talk yeah they they like, can we real... actually talk about that bomb that what got dropped before i got shot out into space and they kind of talk about it but i don't know well, they talk about they it talk what the hell? No, yeah. they, no they talk about it where they're like it you know rose did what she had to do for what she thought was best for Earth. She didn't always do what was best for her. And the consequence of that action was what led us all to live our lives the way that we were living them now. And it wouldn't have been possible without that action. And Steven's like, okay. Yeah, yeah so, so it's clearly like, you know, I, I I can't just be my mom. I can't, I can't do what she did. Both in terms of, like, how great she was and also when she faltered. Like, I can't do that. Yeah, Steven has... To, it's, it's more of Steven's journey to distance himself from his mother, because, like, all he ever heard was how similar they are, and now he has to figure out how they're different. Yeah. And but th- there's also the problem where he's learning that sometimes that, like, more drastic she wasn't perfect. things are necessary to solve problems, you know? I mean, he, I mean, that was the thing, like, when, when you were explaining the episode to me, it sort of hit me right then and there. Like, he was, he tried his best to just reach out and communicate with that Ruby, but in the end, he was like, I, no, I have to... He just reacted. He just protected himself like anybody would. And he didn't want to. He didn't want to, but you know, sometimes you have to make decisions like that. And that was the and that and that was kind of the connective thing there. Mm-hmm. Cuz Garnet basically said the same thing. So, and that's, first, it, and that's the end of season 3. Yeah. So we come back to Beach City and we have some fun silly times. Kindergarten kid. <sighs> yeah. S- Stevie and Perry go back to the Beta Kindergarten. Well, they're, no, they're all there. All they're all there to round up the the corrupt shows, uh, you know, to bubble them. And and they actually address the thing that Nina brought up later. Is like brought up last week. Pearl's like, you know, it's not all right to keep them in cages like this. Isn't that what we're doing? To which Garden is like, it's, it's different. It's, it's different. Like they cannot suffer when they're bubbled, which I think absolutely makes it the case for corrupted gems for. Yeah. Fully sentient gems like Bismuth, I think that the jury's still out on that. Yeah. We definitely know that she's not suffering. Because she's not anything. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, but it, it's not an unreasonable thing to do. I think it is, based on what I, you know, I've been able to, to garner from it, it seems like that is the best thing to do to corrupt the gems. Uh, and then they come upon one that's kind of pretty different looking than corrupted gems we've seen before. And it's feisty. It gets away, and Peridot's like, you guys are a bunch of losers. You can't even do your job. And they basically bet her to try and capture the, the, the monster. And she's like, I can do it. So Steven stays behind to, like, help her not hurt herself. Or more to help the monster, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So the rest of the episode is mostly a Wile E. Coyote hijink. This is the most... <laughs> I'm so upset. I'm so upset they didn't do the running in profile freeze frame Latin scientific name bit. Yeah. I think that would have been maybe too much. It looks like, it looks like they wanted to. It might have got cut. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it was like a thumbnail or something. <laughs> Like, this is the most slapstick the show has ever had, and it's funny. Yeah. Like, the, the bit with the... It's really The good. bit with the rock loop and just all the ways that Peridot gets squashed is yeah. great. I like, I like the implications of this, that if you take it, if you take all these, all these goof-em-up injuries to heart, to canon, it means that Garnet squeezing you is more powerful than being crushed by a boulder several times. Uh, I was actually just now reading something on the wiki. Um, Peridots uh, are pretty hard in terms of, like, gem. There's a, a scale called MOS, M-O-H-S. Yeah. Peridots are 6.5 to 7, whereas Garnets are 6.5 to 7.5. Yeah, so it, nice. it's like a diamond crushing another diamond. It's a yeah. two gems. We actually saw... Artists. I saw a theory on Tumblr, which this is just like an interesting idea, who fucking knows, that that Rose Quartz is maybe set up by the other diamonds because only diamonds can crush diamonds. It's possible. It's not outside the realm of possibility, but it's a guess. Maybe. We won't know for a while. Or maybe we'll know super quick. Apparently there were some leaks or something. There's always leaks. I fucking, I don't care. Don't tell me about it. Yeah. Uh, But then, you know, Oh, Peridot's at her wits is just kind of frustrated. They're having marshmallow time. And Steven is <laughs> trying to get, like, cause even with everything that Peridot has learned, she hasn't 100%, like, got the whole crystal gem business. And Steven's just trying to explain to her like, what it's like to think as if your life was someone else's life. Like, you know, basically you know, trying to teach sympathy. Compa- yeah, sympathy, empathy, compassion. Yeah. Um, like, think... Like, you're a monster and everyone hates you. Your life is an endless torrent of suffering. <laughs> uh, this is your life now. Endless <laughs> suffering. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, that's gonna be that's gonna be a reaction gif set. <laughs> oh boy. I already saw one. Yeah, I already saw one. So, you know, she figures it out. She does no, she does this hilarious thing where she mimics the monster. <laughs> she turns into a little frog baby. They look like like it, it, it shows. It's like an over the. Sh- it's like it's, it's like a bird's eye view, almost a little over the shoulder of like Peridot and the monster squaring off, and they're both just bouncing up and down. And I'm like, this just looks like the freaking <laughs> battle screen of an RPG. <laughs> and the tongue thing, like Bleh. yeah, Bleh. <laughs> I saw somebody somebody edited in uh, Yoshi sound effects for whenever Peridot did the tongue <laughs> thing. Yeah, and I'm. I saw somebody edit in Peridot t- doing the tongue thing, like for the frog that Ruby and Sapphire were looking at in that one episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, she manages to poof the gem. Turns out Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl were there the whole time just to watch what would happen. Because <laughs> yeah. they don't have anything else it's, to do. It's like, we thought it would be funny. Get a load of this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then Peridot bubbles the gem. Her bubbles are green, which does make me wonder how the bubbling works because all the crystal gems bubbles are pink uh not mm. just stevens but these this green bubble and i i, I guess because it's tied to your home yeah <laughs> it just goes to the barn <laughs> yeah so it's like it goes home and it goes to the barn because that's gonna be an antic later <laughs> so i guess there's gonna be like a collection of you know crystal gem well, i would east i would love to see more bubbles that happened off screen but they're there yeah yeah i love to see one of them get loose accidentally because peridot made a bad decision <laughs> and i love that lapis was reading a, a hairstyling shoujo manga yeah pretty <laughs> hairstylist like volume three yeah <laughs> she's in it and she doesn't care she's just like hmm, well that's something i i really do find it refreshing that peridot and lapis are kind of interested in human culture and like yeah. creation as opposed to like Garnet and Pearl, and even a bit of Amethyst, who kind of just likes food. Um, yeah, they they treat it they treat it as a novelty. Yeah, whereas Lapis and Peridot, like this is pretty fun stuff. I'm gonna actually occupy like, my time with it. Probably because they've been on Earth so long, like 
everything is so recent to them. It's like, oh, the humans are at, at it again. What have they come up with this time? Television? That's cute. <laughs> That'll never last. Yeah, but then, but then, like Peridot and Lapis show up, and they're you know it's all already here to them. This is what Earth feels like to them, and it's more static. And like, oh, this is what Earth culture is. Meanwhile, the gems are just like mm, humans are always doing some weird shit. <laughs> it's too much to keep up with. <laughs> yeah, but like Peridot's watching. They're both watching a show that ended like years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably all on Netflix. So next up is our pretty fan servicey episode. I guess as fan servicey as this show can get called know your fusion <laughs> yeah Where? it was it was really interesting I, I basically every every act of the episode i didn't expect it to go there yeah. pretty much I, I had no idea what was gonna happen at any point in time during this episode uh amethyst and pearl it was, it was oh, sorry. <laughs> no just i was just gonna make the shitty goof like for like the whole time i was watching the whole talk show setup i was like this is just like steven universe equivalent of the eric andre show <laughs> <laughs> So Amethyst and Steven are like, okay, this is our moment. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get him. We're gonna surprise him with our fusion. Because with all the crap that happened, they haven't had a chance to explain what went down with Jasper. So they're like, okay, guys, we have someone we'd like you to meet. They play it really coy, and neither Garnet nor Pearl seem to be know what the heck's going on. But they're like humoring them. Because one thing that this episode really does establish is how Amethyst, how Garnet and Pearl really do see Amethyst as. And Steven almost on the same level as, like, they're both kids. Uh -huh. um, so it looks like mom and dad are sitting down to see what the dumb kids are up to. And they're gonna do a little passion play. <laughs> and, oh, they have props. That's cute. And they fuse. Which they don't even need to dance to do. They fuse They fuse by either hugging or, like... I think here was a high five. The high, or, like, the holding hands. Like, grasping hands. Yeah. They, like, they like do a little, like, bro grab. Yeah. And then they fuse, and God, the reactions. Gar Garnet just lo Garnet loves Garnet's just fusion. screaming. <laughs> she picks Pearl up and starts shaking her, <laughs> the throttling her. Explain everything. <laughs> Pearl is like, Pearl is like obviously distressed, but she's still like cleaning. Uh, 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 she's fixing her sock and like trying to make sure the lamp doesn't <laughs> fall over. And they get so excited that they fuse too to form sardonyx. And we kind of get to see the scale that they make and just how big Sardonyx is compared to the house. And we learn that fusions also have their own room in the temple that only appears once the fusion appears. So Sardonyx invites uh, Smokey into her room. And that's where most of this episode takes place. Sardonyx just likes to, Sardonyx just likes to pretend they have a TV show. <laughs> Oh, man, I love Sardonic so much. Yeah. She's great. She does a noble woman's laugh a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That Ojo laugh. Because they kind of trade, like, joking jokes. Yeah. But, um, you know, so she, she she has this show for Smokey, and essentially she just wants to know more about Smokey. What's their deal? What do they do? What makes them special as a fusion? Blah, blah, blah. But the way that, they, the way that she goes about it is very... I mean, I, I mean... You know, she sort of explains it at the end where she's like, I kind of stole their thunder. Um, I made this about me. Everything she does overshadows Smokey, more or less. And Smokey is doing a really good job just trying to, like, play it cool. Like, oh, ha, 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 you know, whatever, man. I guess I'm not good at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite goddamn joke in this episode was whenever they did the flashback footage, it said, provided courtesy of Cartoon Network. Out of control. And the fucking Nicki Minaj joke. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, do we have to pay her? <laughs> yeah. But though Sardonyx doesn't seem to know it, one, what it does become immediately obvious is that one thing that is amplified in Steven and Amethyst when they fuse is their uh, insecurity. Their self-doubt, yeah. Self-doubt, insecurity, and self-deprecation self-deprecating tendencies uh because because it, like, it, it turns out they have that in common and that's uh they're both funny so they're good at making jokes but they're also again like you, you know you think about why people become comedians is to hide the pain uh, what was that garnet line all all, co all comedy is derived from fear yes uh i it, it's it's just so it's just it was it was such an interesting thing 
that like both characters they're very different characters but they both have uh, like the same kind of insecurities and they both have the same way of masking them yeah and that's why you know they're able they were able to reach that understanding in order to make that fusion in the first place because you know steven wasn't able to fuse with amethyst before because he didn't really understand what it was to be amethyst because he put all the gems on this pedestal even though he loves them and considers them his family you know, there is kind of a degree of separation, and this was the first time he really felt equal to one of his gem guardians. Yeah, so Sardonyx is, you know, playing all, you know, doing all these things. Though by her own description, I don't know how Opal is different, because <laughs> other than her weapon, because because um, Sardonyx is like, yeah, I know about the yo-yo, but what else? What else? Alexandrite can shoot fire and and. Uh, Sugalite's super strong and Opal has a bow. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Opal's got the best design. <laughs> she does. I love her design. Is anyway, the episode ends with them like getting to tell the story. Of, like, and then we were in the kindergarten and we hit her with a whip and then the whip turned into a yo-yo and we did some some pro-level nest combos. Well, Sardonyx's inability to understand this, what's special about the yo-yo like kind of it's sort of symbolic because a yo-yo is like, it's a toy right like steven yeah. even specifically said it's not a weapon it's a toy because it's playful they're both very playful and like that's kind of how he sees things he doesn't want to see fusion as just a strong monster that can be a power-up it's like no this is what we what we've been it's not a mega evolution no it's a it's a it's a relationship it's an experience it's like what garnet's been saying so we should treat it that way. It doesn't have to be like, what's her mass super awesome powers? Like, no, she has this yo-yo and she could do fun, cool shit with it. And it's really versatile. And it's a toy. And it's cool. Yeah. And I liked it. It was funny. That's and I, I love the line where Pearl was like, you're such a good influence on him. <laughs> Aww. Oh, silly. We, we also get a scale of like, what, who's the strongest? Yeah, it's a Pearl, Stevani, Garnet, Opal, Sugalite. Presumably Alexandra right at the top, Amethyst at the bottom. Uh, so that's recaps. It was fun. Mm-hmm. We got it was, it was emotional, and then it was it was just let's have some fun times. So now that now that this now that this torrent this flood of Noah's Ark proportions to call back to the movie is over of Stephen. Hopefully, we can now start watching and talking about other cartoons that have been coming out. Yeah, because there are other cartoons out that I've been wanting to watch and talk about, but, like, this is just too it's much. Just, it's the summer of Steven, so that's what you get. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Got any shout-outs, Nikki? Um, yeah, uh, Bugberry on SoundCloud had uh, three comments to make on our BoJack Horseman episode, uh, all regarding our Steven recaps. Okay. Uh, Steven's fighting game also had a couple references to Tekken, namely Mokujin and Kuma, which I should have picked up but didn't. Uh, You're slipping. Well, I don't know Tekken that well. Mokujin's the woodman and Kuma's obviously the bear. <laughs> uh, then the, One of the bears. The brown bear. Uh, judging by how many parallels there are between Gems and Saiyans, I would say they are a warrior race, and it makes sense that Gems as a whole would be more inclined towards aggressive aggro behavior. Also, we've seen plenty of non-beefy gems act just as aggro, if not more, than the larger ones, mainly the rubies. Also, since just being a quartz would apparently make Amethyst high-ranked than Peridot, it seems their culture values warriors greatly as well, so big and powerful gems are more rewarded for throwing their weight around, at least not against those above them in rank. Also, Rose was a quartz, and in every flashback we've seen of her, she doesn't seem very aggro. She's also fairly beefy, uh, which is regarded uh, related to the whole... Um, you know, thing with the uh, bismuth. Yeah. And and wh- while I do think Bugberry raises some uh, very good and valid points there, I do think there are... Th- the idea that there have been, like, two actual, like, muscular... I mean, I agree with Bugberry if this show existed in isolation. Yeah. But it doesn't. So I don't know. Yeah. Like, but again, I, I'm absolutely, it's not really my place to say. I'm absolutely out. not condemning the show for any decisions it has made. I do feel like it's something that the show, that the creators should be aware of. And by this point, they are definitely aware of it. Yeah. Um, like we said, people like to yeah. People like to complain. And uh, one other comment, which 
kind of reflects what we learned with this newest episode, which hadn't aired at the time that they made this comment. Also, I don't think any of the crystal gem see bubbling as a solution. While it certainly isn't good that they're keeping people in perpetual comas, it doesn't seem to be any better alternative. We also don't know how much of a hell it is to be corrupted, so putting them into the coma could be merciful. That's yeah. true. For the corrupted gems, like, that, that's solid. Like For the it, corrupted gems, yeah, I, I, I agree. Still not 100%, but, like, whatever. It's fine. Apparently, like, uh, Magus Merificus on YouTube on our Pepper Ann recaps, uh, Star vs. them quoting us. Pepper Ann? Yeah. Uh, the Pepper Ann episode, the recap segment. Oh, okay. 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 Them quoting us. Star vs. the Forces of Evils won't have some grand overarching plot line. It'll just be a fun episodic romp. You know, just like Wander Over Yonder, that other completely plot free show. Were we being facetious or were we being rubes? That was April 4th of this year. Uh, I, I think we're being rubes. Forget. That was before the finale of Star, I think. Yeah, that was before. I feel like that was before either shows got into it. But, uh, you guys tell me if you, you want to address this, because I don't think we know shit. But from uh, somebody named Naomi. Uh, I also I plan to be an animator when I grow up, but however, my parents want me to be an architect. Any advice? Uh, oh, oof. architect is hell, oof. bro. W- one also, thing- if your fam- if your parents think being an architect means you're more likely to have a profitable career, they're not. They're wrong. That's yeah. not true. That's N- that's actually a, a pretty huge myth. Yeah, N- Nina went to school with a lot of architects who worked themselves to. De- they're, they're all dead now. They're all pretty much dead. <laughs> uh, you know, you constantly have to root. You know, get make sure you're. I don't know, your building license or whatever. There's all this shit. I don't know. All I know is that everything and, my architect friends have told me is that they either regret going to becoming an architect or two are really scared for their future because they have no idea what they're going to do. So, something. And re- regardless, regardless of the specifics of, of anybody's major, when you're, when you're doing that sort of thing where like you're, you're gunning for a specific career because it may or may not be easier money, like maybe in the grand scheme, some careers might be slightly easier than the other. But if you're going after like, this is a high profile gig that I want to do for the rest of my life, there's no such thing as a version of that where you don't have to put in years of dedication of learning whatever it is you have to learn to get in that position and getting lucky and meeting the right people and making those connections you have to do that no matter what you want to do for your career so if you're gonna put up with all that bullshit no matter what try to do it try to do the one that you will at least enjoy doing while you're going through all that bullshit no matter what uh one piece of advice i'll say you could repurpose a lot of architecture supplies as animation supplies Straight edges, graph paper. <laughs> well, most a lot of animation schools are getting rid of um, uh, traditional. traditional art. Well, I also is a lot of is yeah, architecture it's, it's all pro- done on traditional a, media or is that digital? Different... Architecture, it's the, the, both because you're you're physically it's probably its building. own software. You're, you could probably get your parents to buy you a tablet if you say you need it for architecture. <laughs> oh, so no, you're, you're, you're like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm I'm saying you're uh, grift your parents. Grift. Yes, I am saying grift your parents. Okay, because I'm like, I'm so confused. How do you think these things work? Um, yeah, I'm just saying, you get them to buy you a tablet and then use it for animation. <laughs> uh, and they, uh, Naomi also said a lot of really nice things about us, which I'm not going to read because uh, that always feels so masturbatory, but we really appreciate it. Yeah, I say... Thank you. I say, like, if it's not something that you want to do, and considering how hard of a path it is, I don't think it's worth it. Unless it's something that you want. There's a there's a difference between like, there's there's a there's a vast difference between settling for some safe job that'll pay the bills because like your your uncle knew somebody that could get you the job and you're like well this is a comfortable living because following your dreams is hard to dedicating years of your life to something you don't want to do that still might not work out. Yeah, architecture is not settling. It's not like becoming a doctor or something where even if you're a bad doctor, you're going to have a job and you're probably going to be pretty well off, at least comfortably living. You're not going to be poor. Architecture is not like that. If you're bad at architecture... We already have all the buildings we need is the thing. Like, there really isn't a high demand for architects. There really isn't. Cause it, I mean, in a, in a way, it is a form of, like, like freelance artwork. Yeah. Yeah. And that's... That's always a living paycheck to paycheck job because as soon as you finish one, like while probably while you're working on one gig, you gotta have the next one lined up so you can fucking leave your have your lights still turn on. Like my friend eat. who's 
like my friend who's into architecture and like she does want to be an architect but she's also concerned about like you know not eating garbage for the rest of her life she's like also investing a lot in like construction management studies which actually there is a high paying thing i don't know all i'm saying is it's not an easy path and it's not worth it if it's not what you want pursue pursue the talents and interests you legitimately enjoy doing and keep your options open because maybe because you know there's loads of different facets of every industry you want to break into maybe you could go and maybe you go in for one thing and you suddenly find opportunities in slightly related fields it, like just just because you be, just, just keep your options open just because you study animation doesn't mean you're going to move to la and work on a cartoon but you could but you are going to have skills in drawing and design and all Illust- kinds of other stuff. Illustration. and all kinds of other things. Uh, and you'll be making connections with other people in art school. That's really valuable along the road once people start getting jobs. Because here's the thing about anima- the animation industry. People get jobs because they know somebody. You don't just like apply blindly to work for a studio and get the job. Most people get in because they know you because they've worked with you before or whatever. And that's on like that's that's a lot that's a lot of careers. That's half of that's half of like college. Like that's internships, meeting people, learning the ropes of how to break into an industry, like making a good impression on somebody. So when you graduate, they're like, "Oh, hey, I remember that fucking guy. He got me coffee perfect." <laughs> Like, um, in our interview we did with uh, Tara Billinger and um, Zach Bellissimo, Tara got her job in Disney because she went to cons and, and, met networked. In- and networked and met industry people who liked her comics, you know? Rebecca Sugar gave the same advice. Exactly. So it's like, there's no one set path. Yeah, yeah anyway. everyone's path is different. Like, it's only a try, but it's not the only way. Exactly, like... Everyone's path is different, and you won't even know what path you took until it's until you've already made it. And you look exactly. back and go, yeah. like, well, that's not how I expected to get here. It's like, oh, I can't give any us- usable advice from that. Sorry, kids. So you're better off just doing <laughs> what, you know, feels... Do what makes sense to yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, anyway we talked about that for 45 mi- minutes. I think it was a good talk, though. Um, next yeah. week, we are talking about uh, Ever After High again primarily focused on the three specials that have aired since our previous episode, which are Way to Wonderland, Dragon Games, and the newest one, Epic Winter, all of which are Netflix exclusive. Uh, if you only got time for one, Dragon Games. <laughs> uh, but it's going gonna, gonna to be fun. Uh, and in the meantime, if you want to contact us, just do a Google search. I'm tired. <laughs> Tumblr, Twitter. <laughs> Tumblr, Twitter, email. So two goons at Gmail. Uh, Facebook, uh, uh, right. iTunes, iTunes. Yeah, it is. just the two yep. news. All right. Um, I've been Nikki. I've been Nina. I continue to be Tooch. And thank you for tuning in.